It's funny, it started out uh, really in the early 1990s, late 1980s with Buick as our primary customer. And I always talk to people and say that actions speak louder than words. And while I'm very appreciative of the Buick community, I thought it was appropriate to take some action to show my gratitude since no one's really pioneered much for the Buick community in the last 10 or 15 years in terms of turbocharging, I thought it was time. First of all, the Buick uh, was always a challenge with warranty for various reasons. And most of you know that the stock location intercooler has a tendency to hang on the turbocharger. Uh, because the engine rotates and the intercooler doesn't. Especially with front mount intercoolers, there's a lot of things going on under the hood. Well, with the new turbochargers that we've developed, I've addressed some of those issues and I'd like to explain why and how. Let's take a look at the turbine housing. It's a stainless steel, investment cast, smooth bore turbine housing accepts up to a 70 millimeter turbine, but as small as 62 millimeter turbine. It still has the swing valve housing attachment to it, as well as another accessory so that you could do an external wastegate. We'll talk about that more later. But that was the foundation of how we started, is just start with a really good turbine housing so we can improve efficiencies. And what we did is we thought about, well, what were the handicaps before and the compromises, and we've eliminated some of those so you can get more performance out of the exhaust housing. We also want to enhance the compressor cover aerodynamics. So we did this by having a nice four inch inlet, a really good recirculation port, and a nice discharge, which has a full diameter two and a half inch. We also included a speed sensor. This is really important for those who want to know the tip speed of the turbocharger. On a Buick, it's not quite as critical, but it's kind of fun to know what's going on on the inside of this unit. Okay, let's talk about some of the problems we had over the years that I mentioned earlier about warranty and why we reinforced the backplate diameter to iron rather than using aluminum plate. So in the early days, what we had is we had an aluminum backplate that was bolted to the bearing housing with these little four bolts that are only quarter, quarter 20 thread. or And this is really flimsy. So when we had issues in warranty on the Buicks and the intercooler was hanging off the compressor cover, this would have a tendency to deflect and bend. And when it did that, it would drive the compressor wheel into the compressor cover. So the solution is, is to make a back plate that's actually integral to the bearing housing. Just like this, it's all iron. It's not gonna flex. There's no bolts to hold it in place. So if the intercooler does happen to break free or the engine rotates a little bit further because the motor mount's soft or maybe it broke, then we're not gonna have a turbocharger failure. And that's one of the reasons we can offer a two-year warranty unconditional to all you guys so that you're not having these types of issues. Here's what that integral backplate looks like as an assembly. Here's the compressor wheel. Here's the compressor cover, slides right on there, but you can't bend that iron backplate. That's really cool because it's going to save a lot of hassle. So we're not going to have to discuss why my turbocharger rolled into the compressor cover on the wheel and damaged the turbo and then talk about warranty because it's not going to happen. Not again. We're past that. Another feature of the integral backplate is that we no longer have an O-ring in this area as we did on the aluminum backplate which when it got hot or when it got and crystallized from all the high temperatures, then it would eventually start leaking. And of course that created another warranty event or at least the guy having to, someone having to take their turbocharger off the car, sending it in, having it repaired, that extra cost, just for the cost of an O-ring. Let's get rid of those extra costs. Okay, so now we've kind of broken this thing down into the compressor cover. Let's take a look at what's going on here. We have the most modern machining extended tip wheel, 64 millimeter, 62 millimeter. That's really cool. Uh, the 62-62 is kind of the most popular for the street, let's say non-modified uh, engine, and then we get bigger from there. So 64, uh, 66, but I want to introduce what isn't on the market now, and that's a 62-64. 
Now that we have an opportunity to find the sweet spots for turbocharging, I firmly believe that the 6264 is really going to be a big performance turbocharger on the Buick Grand National. By video magic, I've removed the other four bolts and here's the last bolt coming out. So let's take a look at the turbine wheel. So here it is. This is a 64. It could be a 62 or a 66, but it's got the latest aerodynamics involved uh, in the design. It's got a stainless steel shroud on it. It has a dash four inlet feed and eventually it actually will have a dash eight uh, feet uh, drain line here as well as just a standard uh, two bolt drain flange. It's, it's a nice piece of hardware right here. Full ball bearing. Getting into the turbine housing, here's what the inside looks like. The volute is really smooth and I think back in the day uh, some people might remember uh, the process that was called extrude hone and it was really expensive and it damaged a lot of turbocharger parts, but actually when it was successful, it actually improved the performance. Well, that was done on iron housings because an iron casting is really rough. Even a stainless sand casting is really rough, but this is an investment casting. So it's really smooth on the inside, which really helps the airspeed be efficient and pick up the turbine efficiency. And it's gonna be a better piece being that it's an investment cast turbocharger. You're gonna love that. Okay, so the family I've been talking about here is F2. So as we reassemble this thing quickly, this is now packaged as an F2 turbocharger for the Buick Grand National. And let me flip it over, because that's kind of how it's gonna look on the race car, just like that. All right, let's take it to the next level for the Buick guys. This is a 7170. This is a bad machine. Check it out. It's an F3, still built on the F2 platform, so it's really compact, but 71 millimeter inducer on the compressor, 70 X inducer on the turbine wheel. This is a bad dude. Check out the V-bands. V-band compressor cover, V-band turbine housing. Really makes it easy to orientate, but it also keeps it really compact. Here's another feature. Dash 10 oil drain ORB. No more flanges, no more bolts trying to get in there. You just put in the dash 10 ORB and call it a day for the drain line. But even more that I didn't talk about on the F2 is check this out. Now we have a mount for an external wastegate, which really this turbo is probably going to need. Let's take a look at how that's going to look. After 35 years of working with the Buick guys, I know that welding in the race car or your street car is really a kind of a pain. So instead of having to weld on your up pipe into the turbocharger, here it is. I just incorporated a wastegate flange right into the turbine housing. So you actually have two ways to do it. You can do the traditional swing valve or in a case of a 7170 that we have here, you're probably going to use an external gate and here it is just bolts right on. It doesn't get better than that. This is a 44, 45 millimeter flange. You can use multiple different wastegate combinations on here. But fortunately for you guys, we also built you a wastegate to bolt right on. Very affordable and uh, has carries the same warranty as a turbocharger. So just so you know, your Buick turbocharger is going to come with a block off plate and a V-band clamp in case you don't use the external wastegate. In this case, this is one of the F2s. You can go either way. It doesn't really matter. It's really important for a Buick guy to have control of his boost though. And that's one of the issues we saw over the last 35 years. So now we have a solution that's easy for the customer to use or take advantage of. 
Okay, so we're just going to quickly disassemble this unit. Now we can see kind of what the turbine wheel looks like, the compressor wheel. When we designed this turbine wheel, we kept in mind we need to have the highest flow wheel in the smallest package. And by thinking about that, we have a very small hub line on this wheel, produce a lot of exhaust air through the blades very efficiently. As like the F2, here's an F3, also has the integral backplate. And the advantage of this integral backplate, again, is because we don't want an aluminum bolted plate to an iron housing. So looking at the F3 compressor cover, you might notice when you take yours apart, the check it out, that it's got a really large diameter diffuser. This really helps the air speed off the compressor wheel. So you've got really good um, efficiency when you start turning up the boost. And also, of course, we have this three inch discharge. So just as it's coming around the volute, we want the air to be able to expand so it can get into the intercooler and of course into the engine. So I just want to underscore the benefits of a lot of the, I guess, engineering that we've done over the last year or so to bring new technology to the Buick market is a very, very low inertia bearing. So we have very fast spool up, improved aerodynamics, not only on the compressor side, but also the turbine side. A, a better match for the Buick guys, because of course I've been doing this 35 years. I have kind of a feeling what's gonna work. The external wastegate plumbed right to the turbine housing is a big feature, really saves a lot of money and of course, a lot of hassle and you don't have to be welding on your car. It all comes ready to go. And of course, the best packaging, bang for the buck, smallest turbocharger, lightest weight, most power you're gonna make with these HPT turbos. I really appreciate the Buick community they really got me going from the start, and I want to make sure that I don't forget about who put me on the map back in the day.